Welcome to the Grain Pro Market Report. Hello and welcome to the Grain Pro Market Update for today, Wednesday, the 12th of June 2019. I'm Mario Bontante. I'm joined by Grain Pro Traders, Cameron Nichols, and Nick McCarthy. Well, it's been an interesting start, to say the least. Volatile and uncertainty uh, across the board in the grain market. We've seen some of the highest grain prices in a decade. We've seen one of the worst droughts in 74 years. Some say one of the worst droughts in Australian history. We've seen massive destocking in New South Wales and Queensland, and then the mass shipments of grain moved from the WA over to the East Coast. We saw the tumbling of barley after China's anti-dumping application, and then of course, the importing of wheat from Canada in fear of critical shorts and escalating prices. We saw hay skyrocket, and now as early as June, we find end users struggling to find good quality affordable hay anywhere. One of the biggest surprises for us was that of pulses. Who would have thought that beta brands would have got to 1200 BCT Melbourne? Victorian origin lupins, 615 on farm. And then on the other hand, chickpeas and lentils still struggling because of tariffs. Critical shorts and escalating prices raising, raises a question as to how much grain is actually left in Australia. Cameron, what have you seen with the pulse market in Australia? Oh, as you mentioned, Mario, the uh, fable beans are probably the biggest story. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> unseen up to $1,200, as you mentioned. Um, it, Egypt um, are, are the main customer for fable of beans, of course. Mm. And um, yeah, drought here, so there's not many produced and problems in Europe. So uh, fable beans skyrocketed. Uh, right. Now they've come back, come back to probably under 800 Right. At the moment, so, and what's the story of lentils? I mean, we're seeing that you know, feed lentils still strong. Feed lentils are still strong, and, and sheep sheep farmers are using a lot of a lot of the feed lentils. They're a good protein source. Absolutely. absolutely. And how are they using it? Mix mix and mixes, yeah. uh, crushing them, uh, yeah. and yeah, twenty five percent protein, so it's mm -hmm. good as mm -hmm. um, Yeah. So and. The main uh, demand on export is probably nipper lent lentils in the Bangladesh. Yeah. Uh, the Indian market still got high tariffs, so yeah, yeah. Uh, good demand for nippers. Jumbos occasionally, mm -hmm. they go into, into Sri Lanka, so yeah, occasionally. Yeah. Uh, what are we going to do with chickpeas? Chickpeas are, yeah, really stagnant. It's a sad story. Yeah, yeah. Well, in, of course, India is the main market there mm -hmm. again as well. And, uh, I guess it's it's still dry in, nor uh, in northern New South Wales and parts where a lot of them are produced, so mm -hmm. uh, that seems to be holding the price fairly stable at the moment. But right. Oh, there's a severe lack of demand still. So. Right, right. Yeah. And we've had some rain, Nick. We've had some rain in uh, Queensland, in Riverina, uh, Dolben, and Western Australia. Yeah, I think the biggest, um, the, well, the, the most important rainfall we've seen from a production uh, on a nationwide basis has been the, the rain that fell over the wheat belt in right. Western Australia towards the end of last week. It was good. Uh, one to two inches right yeah. across the belt, so yeah. some yeah. seriously high rainfall areas there. And you uh, think they're set now? They're set for harvest? Look, they've got, they've got further rainfall forecast this week. Um, talking to a few of the guys over there, over there, they are still significantly behind their average rainfall at this point. Right. Uh, but it is giving them a start now. So mm -hmm. provided they get some moisture through the winter and then a reasonable spring, mm -hmm. um, They'll, they'll be there again to support the east coast of Australia. It stays dry over here with transcontinental yeah, shipments yeah. again. And some uh, some large rainfall uh, just recently in the Riverina and now more to come. Huh? We're pretty localised in, in the Riverina. We saw Wagga, um, sort of south of Wagga Forca, recording only sort of 15 mils, but when you headed north, mm. it was up to 25 mm. mils and then even um, up into the Tamora region as well, mm. there was some reasonable mm. rainfall, but it was quite isolated. There wasn't a huge amount in the western areas. Mm. Um, and as you head further north, not much up there either, only one to two mils when you go sort of into the central west mm -hmm. uh, and up into northern New South Wales as well. In saying that, the, the eight day forecast does look quite strong for the whole east coast. Right, well there you have it. Some significant rainfall uh, across um, New South Wales, uh, Victoria, Western Australia and northern Queensland. Uh, we'll do some up, updating pricing. Uh, Cameron, what are you seeing with oats and some of the other cereals? Um, yes, yeah, so oats are hitting the four hundred dollar a ton mark in right. Western Australia, um, and that's an all-time sort of record. Right. So the the oat price uh, over here, Melbourne is now between four 
545 and 555 uh, delivered yeah, as a member. Hard delivered. Yep. Quick, quick. In, uh, in the Riverina, mm. um, you, you're, you're up at 560, 570 sort Have of. Have you ever seen that before, those prices? No, never. No. No. no, no. 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 So, um, yeah, to, to the grower, it's a close yeah. to 500 dollars a ton at the moment. So. Right, right. Yeah. And, and, uh, and peas, still, so pe peas are a bit of a sad story as well. Aren't yeah, they? peas have been pretty stagnant. Mm. Um, there's number one, you probably need to be paying 550 on farm in the Wimmera Valley, mm -hmm. um, and the, there is demand from the splitters. Yes. Uh, and there are also a little bit of stock feed demand around probably 510, 520 sort of right. thing. Right, they're interchangeable the peas, well, they are the yeah. depending on the price of lupins. Yes, correct. Of course, peas is a protein source, but again, I think the winner is, uh, is lentils, feed lentils, as a good protein source and a good, um, I guess, source of energy as well. Uh, Nick, we're seeing significant, um, I guess, drop in, in Victorian prices, uh, New South Wales prices in particular, barley and wheat, heading off uh, the slow start uh, in Chicago and then the recovery uh, overnight again. The peas and um, and uh, well, beans, sorry, and, and maize. Yeah, look, um, we had a, a nice little spike in the cereal market, wheat and barley, um, on the delivered markets there, sort of ten days ago. Yes. Um, since that point in time, and that was off the back of a, a, a sharp rise in Chicago with the futures market and the ASX yeah. following it as well. So mm -hmm. those delivered markets uh, for new crop rose, and the old crop market uh, went with it. Right. Since that point in time, we have seen a slight softening un until last night in yeah. the futures market. The old crop market does tend to work in sympathy with that as well. So, I still personally think we are at a supply shortage moving yes. forward. Yes. Um, a lot of these these lower bids are working in the last the last part of the financial year. Yes. So as we start moving further into the into the new financial year, July through September delivery periods, mm -hmm. we can still see some upside there, I believe. Good. Good. All right. Well, there you have it. Um, that'll do for today's update. Uh, we'll see you again next week. If you have any questions, uh, please make some comments on, um, on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you have photos or videos or something that you want to cover yourself that's important to you, please let us know and we'll be happy to uh, try and answer your questions and, and give you some feedback. Thanks again. Until next week. Bye for now. See live bids and offers on grainpro.com.au.